Welcome, welcome. Don't mind the noise, just another night in Vienna. Ah, Vienna, where whatever you like, you can find. Where love is consummated and lechery rewarded. Some say it's gone too far, sunk too low. And rumor has it, our very own Vincentio, our Duke of Dark Corners, has a plan up his sleeve. And I don't think it's too much to say that Lord Angelo will be pleased. But can he navigate events to come? Let's waste no more time. Away we to the Duke. Aeschylus. My lord. What think you of it? If any in Vienna be of worth, it is Lord Angelo. Look where he comes. Always obedient to your grace's will, I come to know your pleasure. Angelo, there is a kind of character in thy life. Hold, therefore, Angelo, in our remove be thou at full ourself. Mortality and mercy in Vienna live in thy tongue and heart. Old Aeschylus, though first in question, is thy secondary. Take thy commission. Now, good my lord, let there be some more test made of my metal before so noble and so great a figure be placed upon it. No more evasion. We have with a leavened and prepared choice proceeded to you. Therefore, take your honors. The heavens give safety to your purposes. Lead forth and bring you home in happiness. I thank you. Fare you well. No, Holy Father, why I desire thee to give me secret harbor hath a purpose. May your grace speak of it? I have delivered to Lord Angelo, a man of stricture and firm abstinence, my absolute power and place here in Vienna. And he supposes me travelled to Poland, for so I have strewed it in the common ear, and so it is received. Now, pious sir, you will demand of me why I do this. Gladly, my lord. We have strict statutes and most biting laws, which for this nineteen years we have let slip. It rested in your grace to unloose this tide of justice when you pleased, and it in you more dreadful would have seemed than in Lord Angelo. I do fear too dreadful. Therefore, indeed, my father, I have on Angelo imposed the office, who may, in ambush of my name, strike home. And to behold his sway, I will, as t'were a brother of your order, visit both prince and people. Therefore, I prithee, supply me with the habit, and instruct me how I may formally in person bear me like a true friar. More reasons for this action at our more leisure shall I render you, only this one. Lord Angelo is precise, stands at a guard with envy, scarce confesses that his blood flows, or that his appetite is more to bread than stone. Hence shall we see, if power changes purpose, what our seemers be. How now, Mistress Overdone? Which of your hips has the most profound sciatica? Well, well, there's one yonder arrested and carried to prison was worth five thousand of you. Who's that, I pray thee? Mary, that's Claudio, Signor Claudio. Claudio to prison? Tis not so. Nay, but I know tis so. I saw him arrested, saw him carried away, and which is more within these three days, his head to be chopped off. But after all this fooling, I would not have it so. Art thou sure of this? I am too sure of it, and it is forgetting Madame Giulietta with child. You have not heard of the proclamation, have you? What proclamation? Oh, here comes Signor Claudio, led by the provost to prison. Fellow, 
Why dost thou show me thus to the world? Bear me to prison where I am committed. I do it not in evil disposition, but from Lord Angelo by special charge. Why, how now, Claudio? Whence comes this restraint? From too much liberty, Lucio. Liberty. What's thy offense, Claudio? What but to speak of would offend again? What? Is't murder? No. Lettery? Call it so. Is lettery so looked after? Thus stands it with me. Upon a true contract, I got possession of Julietta's bed. You know the lady. She is fast my wife. Save that we do the denunciation lack of outward order. But it chances the stealth of our most mutual entertainment with character too gross is writ on Juliet. With child, perhaps? Unhappily even so. And the new deputy now for the duke awakes me all the enrolled penalties, which have, like unscoured armor, hung by the wall. Send after the duke and appeal to him. I have done so, but he's not to be found. I prithee, Lucio, do me this kind service. This day my sister should the cloister enter and there receive her approbation. Acquaint her with the danger of my state. Implore her in my voice that she make friends to the strict deputy, bid herself assay him. I have great hope in that, for in her youth there is a prone and speechless dialect, such as move men. I pray she may. I'll to her. I thank you, good friend Lucio. Within two hours. Come, provost, away. Ho! Peace be in this place! Who's that which calls? Fear me a man's voice. Uh, gentle Isabella, turn you the key and know the business of them. For if a man should seek our company, you may, I may not. You are yet unsworn. When you have vowed, you must not speak with men, but in the presence of the prioress. Ho! Oh, they call again. I pray you, answer them. Peace and prosperity. Who is it that calls? Hail, virgin, if you be, as those cheek roses proclaim you are no less. Can you so stead me as bring me to the sight of Isabella, a novice of this place and the fair sister to her unhappy brother Claudio? Why her unhappy brother, let me ask? I am that Isabella and his sister. Gentle and fair, your brother kindly greets you. Not to be weary with you, he is in prison. Woe me! For what? He hath got his friend with child. Your brother and his lover have embraced. Someone with child by him? My cousin Juliet? Is she your cousin? Ad adoptedly, as schoolmates change their names by vain though apt affection. She it is. Oh, let him marry her. This is the point. The Duke is very strangely gone from hence. Upon his place, and with full line of his authority, governs Lord Angelo, a man whose blood is very snowbroth. Doth he so seek his life? Has censured him already, and as I hear, the provost hath a warrant for his execution. Alas, what poor abilities in me to do him good. What say the power you have? My power, alas, I doubt. Our doubts are traitors. Go to Lord Angelo. I'll see what I can do. But speedily. I will about it straight. Good night, adieu. Ah, oh, sweet, sumptuous Isabella. Claudia seems to think her much to the palate of Lord Angelo. I see her now, running down the cloister steps, plotting her plea. Events are in motion. Where they will lead our innocent sister, I know not. I do know this. When lamb enters lion's lair, lamb and lion beware. We must not make a scarecrow of the law, setting it up to fear the birds of prey and let it keep one's shape, till custom make it their perch and not their terror. Aye, but yes, let us be keen and rather cut a little than fall and bruise to death. Alas, this gentleman, whom I would save, had a most noble father. 
Tis one thing to be tempted, Aeschylus. Another thing to fall. Sir, he must die. Be it as your wisdom will. See you the Claudio be executed by nine tomorrow morning. Bring him his confessor, let him be prepared, for that's the utmost of his pilgrimage. Well, heaven forgive him and forgive us all. Some rise by sin and some by virtue fall. Now what's the matter, provost? Is it your will, Claudio, shall die tomorrow? Did I not tell thee yea? Hast thou not order? Why dost thou ask again? Lest I might be too rash. Under your good correction, I have seen when, after execution, judgment hath repented o'er his doom. Do you your office, or give up your place? I crave your honor's pardon. What shall be done, sir, with the groaning Juliet? She's very near her hour. Do you the fornicatress be removed? Let her have needful but not lavish means. And, sir, the sister of the man condemned desires access to you. Hath he a sister? I, my good lord, a very virtuous maid, and to be shortly of his sisterhood, if not already. Well, let her be admitted. God save your honor. You're welcome. What's your will? I am a woeful suitor to your honor. Please but your honor hear me. Well, what's your suit? There is a vice that most I do abhor, and most desire should meet the blow of justice, for which I would not plead but that I must. Well, the matter? I have a brother is condemned to die. I do beseech you, let it be his fault and not my brother. Oh, heaven give thee moving graces. Condemn the fault, but not the actor of it? Why, every false condemned ere it be done. Mine were the very cipher of a function, to find the fault whose fine stands in record and let go by the actor. Oh, just but severe law. I had a brother then. Heaven keep your honor. Give it not o'er so. To him again, entreat him. Kneel down before him, hang upon his gown. You are too cold. To him, I say. Must he needs die? Made in no remedy. Yes, I do think that you might pardon him, and neither heaven nor man grieve at the mercy. I will not do it. But can you, if you would? Look, what I will not, that I cannot do. But might you do it, and do the world no wrong? If so, your heart were touched with that remorse, as mine is to him. He's sentenced. Tis too late. You are too cold. Well, believe this. No ceremony that to great ones longs, not the king's crown, nor the deputed sword, the marshal's truncheon, nor the judge's robe, become them with one half so good a grace as mercy does. Pray you be gone. I went to heaven I had your potency, and you were Isabel. Should it then be thus? Your brother is a forfeit of the law, and you but waste your words. It is the law, not I, condemns your brother. Were he my kinsman, brother, or my son, it should be thus with him. He must die tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, that's sudden. Spare him. Spare him. He's not prepared for death. Even for our kitchens, we kill the fowl of season. Shall we serve heaven with less respect than we do minister to our gross selves i touch him there's the vein the law hath not been dead though it has slept yet show some pity i show it most of all when i show justice your brother dies tomorrow be content so you must be the first that gives this sentence and he that suffers Oh, it is excellent to have a giant's strength, but it is tyrannous to use it like a giant. That's well said. Pray heaven she win him. Why do you put these sayings upon me? Because authority, though it err like others, hath yet a kind of medicine in itself. Go to your bosom, knock there, and ask your heart what it doth know that's like my brother's fault. 
If it confess a natural guiltiness such as his, let it not sound a thought upon your tongue against my brother's life. Oh, to him, to him, wench. He will relent. He's coming. I perceive it. She speaks, and tis such sense that my sense breeds with it. Very well. Gentle, my lord, turn back. I will bethink me. Come again tomorrow. Hark, how I'll bribe you. Good, my lord, turn back. How, bribe me? Aye, with such gifts that heaven shall share with you, not with fond shekels of the tested gold or stones whose rates are either rich or poor as fancy values them, but with true prayers that shall be up at heaven and enter there ere sunrise. Well, come to me tomorrow. Go to, tis well, away. At what hour tomorrow shall I attend your lordship? At any time for noon. Save your honor. From thee, even from thy virtue. What's this? What's this? Is this her fault or mine? The tempter or the tempted, who sins the most? What dost thou, or what art thou, Angelo? Dost thou desire her folly for those things that make her good? What? Do I desire to hear her speak again and feast upon her eyes? What is thy dream on? Never could the strumpet, with all her double vigor, art and nature, once stir my temper. But this virtuous maid subdues me quite. Even till now, when women were fond, I smiled and wondered how. I wonder no more, Lord Angelo. Wonder no more. Hail to you, Provost. So I think you are. I am the Provost. What's your will, good friar? Bound by my charity and my blessed order, I come to visit the afflicted spirits here in the prison. Well, look, here comes one. She is with child, and he that got it sentenced. When must he die? As I do think, tomorrow. Repent you, fair one, of the sin you carry. I do, and bear the shame most patiently. Love you the man that wronged you? Yes, as I love the woman that wronged him. So then it seems your most offenseful act was mutually committed? Mutually. Then was your sin of heavier kind than his? I do confess it and repent it, father. There rest. Your partner, as I hear, must die tomorrow, and I am going with instruction to him. Grace go with you. Benedicite. When I would pray and think, I think and pray to several subjects. Heaven hath my empty words, whilst my invention, hearing not my tongue, anchors on Isabel. How now, who's there? How now, fair maid? I'm come to know your pleasure. That you might know it would much better please me than to demand what tis. Your brother cannot live. Even so, heaven keep your honor. Yet he may live a while. And it may be as long as you or I, yet he must die. Under your sentence. Yea, I, now the voice of the recorded law, pronounce a sentence on your brother's life. Might not there be a charity in sin to save this brother's life? Please you to do it. I'll take it as a peril to my soul. It is no sin at all, but charity. Please you to do it at peril of your soul were equal poise of sin and charity. That I do beg his life. If it be a sin, heaven let me bear it. Then but hear me. Admit no other way to save your brother's life, but that you, his sister, finding yourself desired of one whose favor with the judge or own great place, could fetch your brother from the manacles of the all-building law. And that there were no earthly mean to save him, but that you must lay down the treasure of your body to the supposed, or else to let him suffer. What would you do? I have no tongue but one. Gentle, my lord, let me entreat you speak the former language. Plainly conceive, 
I love you. <laughs> My brother did love Juliet, and you tell me that he shall die for it. You shall not, Isabel, if you give me love. I know your virtue hath a license in it, which seems a little fouler than it is to pluck on others. Believe me on mine honor. My words express my purpose. <laughs> little honor to be much believed in most pernicious purpose. Seeming, seeming, I will proclaim thee, Angelo. Look for it. Sign me a present pardon for my brother, or with an outstretched throat I'll tell the world aloud what man thou art. Who will believe thee, Isabel? My unsoiled name, the austereness of my life, my vouch against you, and my place of the state will so your accusation overweigh that you shall stifle in your own report and smell of calumny. Redeem thy brother by yielding up thy body to my will, or not only shall he die the death, but thy unkindness shall his death draw out to lingering sufferance. Answer me tomorrow. Or by the same affection that now guides me most, I'll prove a tyrant to him. As for you, say what you can. My false or ways are true. To whom should I complain did I tell this? Who would believe me? All to my brother. Though he hath fallen by prompture of the blood, yet hath he in him such a mind of honor that had he twenty heads to tender down on twenty bloody blocks, he'd yield them up before his sister should her body stoop to such abhorred pollution. Then, Isabel, live chaste, and brother die. More than our brother is our chastity. I'll tell him yet of Angelo's request, and fit his mind to death for his soul's rest. So then you hope of pardon from Lord Angelo. The miserable have no other medicine but only hope. I have hoped to live and am prepared to die. Be absolute for death. Either death or life shall thereby be the sweeter. What ho? Peace here, grace and good company. Dear sir, ere long I'll visit you again. Most holy sir, I thank you. Oh, now, sister, what's the comfort? Why, as all comforts are, most good, most good indeed. Lord Angelo, having affairs to heaven, intends you for his swift ambassador. Is there no remedy? None but such remedy as to save a head to cleave a heart in twain. Oh, but is there any? Yes, brother, you may live. There is a devilish mercy in the judge. But in what nature? In such a one as you consenting to it would bark your honor from that trunk you bear and leave you naked. Let me know the point. This outward sainted deputy is yet a devil. His filth within being cast he would appear a pond as deep as hell. The frenzy Angelo? If I would yield him my virginity, thou mightst be freed. Oh, heavens, it cannot be. Yes, he would give it thee from this rank offense, so to offend him still. This night's the time that I should do what I abhor to name, or else thou diest tomorrow. Thou shalt not do it. Oh, word but my life, I'd throw it down for your deliverance as frankly as a pin. Thanks, dear Isabel. Be ready, Claudio, for your death tomorrow. Yes. <sighs> Has he affections in him that thus would make him bite the law by the nose when he would force it? Sure, it is no sin, or of the deadly seven, tis the least. Which is the least? If it were damnable, he being so wise, why would he, for a momentary trick, be perdurably fined? Oh, Isabel. What says, my brother? Death is a fearful thing. And shamed life a hateful. I, but to die, and go we know not where. 
to lie in cold obstruction and to rot this sensible warm motion to become a kneaded clod and the delighted spirit to bathe in fiery floods or to reside in thrilling region of thick ribbed ice and to be imprisoned in the viewless winds and thrown with restless violence round about the pendant world or to be worse than worst that lawless and insurgent thought imagine howling Tis too horrible, the weariest and most loathed will be life that age, ache, penury, and imprisonment can lay on nature is a paradise to what we fear of death. Alas, alas. Sweet sister, let me live. What sin you do to save a brother's life, nature dispenses on the deed so far that it becomes a virtue. Oh, you beast oh faithless coward oh dishonest wretch nay hear me isabel oh fie 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 mercy to thee would prove itself a bod tis best thou diest quickly no hear me isabella i am so out of love with life that i will sue to be rid of it Vouchsafe a word, young sister, but one word. What is your will? I have overheard what hath passed between you and your brother. Oh, how much is the good duke deceived in Angelo? If ever he return, and I can speak to him, I will open my lips in vain, or discover his government. That shall not be much amiss. Yet, as the matter now stands, to the love I have in doing good, a remedy presents itself. Let me hear you speak farther. I have spirit to do anything that appears not foul in truth of my spirit. Have you not heard speak of Mariana, the sister of Frederick, the great soldier who miscarried at sea? I have heard of the lady, and good words went with her name. She should this Angelo have married. Can this be so? Did Angelo so leave her? Left her in tears and dried not one of them with his comfort. But it is a rupture that you may easily heal, and the cure of it not only saves your brother, but keeps you from dishonor in doing it. Well, show me how, good father. Go you to Angelo. Answer his requiring with a plausible obedience. Agree with his demands to the point, only refer yourself to this advantage. First, that your stay with him may not be long, that the time may have all shadow and silence in it, and the place answer to convenience. This being granted in course, and now follows all, we shall advise this wronged maid to stead up your appointment. Go in your place. What think you of it? The image of it gives me content already. Haste you speedily to Angelo. If for this night he entreats you to his bed, give him promise of satisfaction. I will presently to St. Luke's. There resides this dejected Mariana. At that place, call upon me and dispatch with Angelo, that it may be quickly. I thank you for this comfort. Fare you well, good father. <laughs> what news, friar, of the duke? I know none. Can you tell me of any? Some say he is with the emperor of Russia. Other some, he is in Rome. But where is he, think you? I know not where, but wheresoever, I wish him well. It was a mad fantastical trick of him to steal from the state. A very superficial, ignorant, unweighing fellow. You do him wrong, surely. He would be drunk, too. That, let me inform you. Either this is the envy in you, folly or mistaking. Come, sir. I know what I know. I can hardly believe that, since you know not what you speak. I pray you, your name? Sir. My name is Lucio, well known to the Duke. He shall know you better still, if I may live to report you. I fear you not. Farewell, good friar. I prithee, pray for me. No might nor greatness in mortality can censure scape. Back wounding calumny, the whitest virtue strikes. Fear not, folks. You have not been hearing wrong. 
our false rope duke, and our stubborn Isabella have indeed hatched a plan. Dubious territory, pure Isabella. What would the sisters think? But more importantly, will Mariana bite? Not for me to say. To this maiden, we must away. Take, oh, take those lips away that so sweetly were forsworn, and those eyes the break of day, lights that do mislead the morn. Very well met, and well come. What is the news from this good deputy? He hath a garden, sir, commured with brick. There have I made my promise upon the heavy middle of the night to call upon him. Tis well borne up. I have not yet made known to Mariana a word of this. What ho, fair maid, come forth. I pray you, be acquainted with this maid. She comes to do you good. I do desire the like. Well, do you please walk aside? He who the sword of heaven will bear should be as holy as severe. Shame to him whose cruel striking kills for faults of his own liking. Twice treble shame on Angelo to weed my vice and let his grow. Oh, what may man within him hide, though angel on the outward side? Welcome, how agreed? She'll take the enterprise upon her father, if you advise it. It is not my consent, but my entreaty to. Little have you to say when you depart from him, but soft and low, remember now, my brother. Fear me not. Nor, gentle daughter, fear you not at all. He is your husband on a pre-contract, to bring you thus together, tis no sin. Come, let us go. With Angelo tonight shall lie his old betrothed but despised, so disguised shall, by the disguised, pay with falsehood false exacting, and perform an old contracting. Every letter he hath writ hath dispatched other, in most uneven and distracted manner. His actions show much like to madness. Pray heaven his wisdom be not tainted. And why meet him at the gates and redeliver our authorities there? I guess not. And why should we proclaim it that if any crave redress of justice that they should exhibit their petitions in the street? Well, I beseech you, give notice to such men of sort and suit as are to meet him. I shall, sir. Fare you well. Good night. This deed unshapes me quite, makes me unpregnant and dull to all proceedings. A deflowered maid, and by the eminent body that enforced the law against it. Alack, when our grace we have forgot, nothing goes right. We would and we would not. Oh, Angelo, a dark night of the soul for you. What have you done with your days of power? A lifelong longing, wasted on longing itself. Best put on your face. Here comes the Duke. Well, this is it, folks, where I leave you to yourselves, where I fade into the scene and let you, from these events, take what you care. My very worthy cousin, fairly met, our old and faithful friend, we are glad to see you. Happy return, be your royal graces. Many and hearty thankings to you both. We have made inquiry of you, and we hear such goodness of your justice that we cannot but yield you forth to public thanks for running more requital. You make my bonds still greater. Justice, O oh, royal duke, veil your regard. Upon a wronged, I would fain have said a maid. 
relate your wrongs. In what? By whom? Be brief. Here is Lord Angelo shall give you justice. You bid me seek redemption of the devil. My lord, her wits, I fear me, are not firm. She hath been a suitor to me for her brother, cut off by course of justice. By course of justice. And she will speak most bitterly and strange. Most strange, but yet most truly will I speak. That Angelo's forsworn, is it not strange? That Angelo is an adulterous thief, a hypocrite, a virgin violator? Is it not strange and strange? Nay, it is ten times strange. I am the sister of one Claudio, condemned upon the act of fornication, to lose his head condemned by Angelo. I, in probation of a sisterhood, was sent to by my brother, one Lucio as then the messenger. Fie, it like your grace. You were not bid to speak. No, my good lord, nor wish to hold my peace. This gentle one told somewhat of my tale. Right. It may be right, but you are in the wrong to speak before your time. Proceed. In brief, to set the needless process by, how I persuaded, how I prayed and kneeled, and how he refelled me, and how I replied. For this was of much length, the vile conclusion I now began with grief and shame to utter. He would not, but by gift of my chaste body to his concupsible, intemperate lust, release my brother. This is most likely. Oh, that it were as like as it is true. By heaven, fond wretch, thou knowest not what thou speak'st. His integrity stands without blemish. To prison with her! Shall we thus permit a blasting and a scandalous breath to fall on him so near us? This needs must be a practice. Who knew of your intent in coming hither? One that I would were here, Friar Lodovic. A ghostly father belike. Who knows that Lodovic? My lord, I know him. I do not like the man. Is this a witness? First, let her show her face, and after speak. Pardon, my lord. I will not show my face until my husband bid me. No. You say your husband? Why, just, my lord. And that is Angelo who thinks he knows that he ne'er knew my body, but knows he thinks that he knows Isabel's. This is a strange abuse. We'll see thy face. My husband bid me, now I will unmask. This is that face, thou cruel Angelo, which once thou swarest was worth the looking on. This is the hand, which with a vowed contract was fast belocked in thine. And this is the body that took away the match from Isabel, and did supply thee at thy garden house in her imagined person. Know you this woman? Carnally, she says. I said no more. <sighs> Enough, my lord. My lord, I must confess I know this woman. And five years since there was some speech of marriage betwixt myself and her which was broke off. But Tuesday night, last gone in his garden house, he knew me as a wife. I did smile, but till now. Now, good my lord, give me the scope of justice. My patience here is touched. I do perceive these poor and formal women are no more but instruments of some more mightier member that sets them on. Where is the friar that set them on? Let him be sent for. Your provost knows the place where he abides, and he may fetch for him. Go do it instantly. This may prove worse than hanging. Sir, by your leave, hast thou a word or wit or impudence that yet can do the office? If thou hast, rely upon it till my tale be heard, and hold no longer out. O oh, my dread lord, I should be guiltier than my guiltiness. How can I be undiscernible when I do perceive your grace like power divine hath looked upon my passes? Then, good prince, no longer hold session to my shame. But let my trial be mine own confession. Immediate sentence is see and sequent death is all the grace I beg. Away with him to death. Oh, my dear lord, I crave no other nor no better man. Never crave him. We are definitive. They say best men are molded out of faults. 
and for the most become much more the better for being a little bad. So may my husband. Oh, Isabel, will you not lend a knee? Most bounteous sir, I partly think a dear sincerity governed his deeds till he did look on me. Since it is so, let him not die. Come hither, Mariana. Go take her hence and marry her instantly. Come hither, Isabel. Your friar is now your prince, as I was then, advertising and holy to your business, not changing heart with habit. I am still attorneyed to your service. Provost, go fetch Claudio hither. Let us look upon him. If he be like your brother, for his sake is he pardoned. And for your lovely sake, give me your hand and say you will be mine. He is my brother too, but fitter time for that. By this, Lord Angelo perceives he's safe. Methinks I see a quickening in his eye. Well, Angelo, your evil quits you well. Look that you love your wife, her worth worth yours. I find an apt remission in myself. And yet, here's one in place I cannot pardon. You, Lucio, who knew me for a fool, wherein have I so deserved of you that you extol me thus? Faith, my lord, I spoke it but according to the trick. If you will hang me for it, you may. But I had rather it would please you I might be whipped. Whipped first, and then hanged after. Proclaim it, provost, round about the city. Is any woman wronged by this lewd fellow? As I have heard her swear herself, there's one whom is begot with child. Let her appear, and she shall marry her. The nuptial finished, let her be whipped and hanged. I beseech your highness, do not marry me to a whore. Upon mine honor thou shalt marry her. Thy slanders I forgive, and therewithal remit thy other forfeits. Take her to prison, and see our pleasure herein executed. Marrying a punk, my lord, is pressing to death, whipping, and hanging. Slandering a prince deserves it. Joy to you, Mariana. Love her, Angelo. I have confessed her, and I know her virtue. She, Claudio, that you wronged, look you restore. Dear Isabel, I have a motion much imports your good, whereto, if you'll a willing ear incline. What is mine is yours, and what is yours is mine. So bring us to our palace, where we'll show what's yet behind. That's meet you all should know. <laughs>